Welcome to Charts, Maps, and Visualizations, Making Linked Open Data Fun and Approachable with Carnegie Hall Data Lab. I'm Katherine Gronsville, the Digital Collections Manager in the Carnegie Hall Archives. I'm Lisa Barrier, the Digital Collections Associate. And I'm Rob Hudson, the Manager of the Carnegie Hall Archives. Before we talk about the Data Lab, I'd just like to give you a brief overview of Carnegie Hall's performance history data. At the Carnegie Hall Archives, we maintain a database that attempts to keep track of every event that's happened at Carnegie Hall from the time the hall opened in 1891 to the present day. Although the archives was not established until 1986 and we are missing some earlier documentation, we nonetheless have records for more than 52,000 events with authority records for more than 110,000 performers, 23,000 composers, and more than 100,000 creative works. As you might expect for a hall known for musical performances, a great number of these records are for orchestral and choral concerts, opera, chamber music, recitals, but they really cover the gamut of musical genres from classical straight through to hip hop. In addition to this though, we've also had quite a bit of musical theater, straight plays, and particularly in the pre-television and pre-radio era, many civic events, things like state and local political conventions, lectures, debates, travelogues, and rallies like suffragette rallies. So it really covers the full range of our, of our uh, cultural heritage history. We began making this available to the public on our website in 2013 when we launched our online performance history search, where you can currently search more than 49,800 event records. We update these records on a weekly basis as we continue to add information on events for which we were missing documentation or as we clean up some of the older database entries. In 2017, we released this performance history data as linked open data in RDF format. And now you can search uh, basically the same event records as you can in our HTML performance history search, and it consists of around 4 million triples. Initially, this was a static data release covering just the events from 1891 to 2017, but we had a major update in July of 2019. And as of this past week, we've now implemented a procedure that will update this data on the same weekly basis as our online performance history search. We've released all of this data into the public domain with a CC0 data license, and you can check it out at our endpoint at data.carnegiehall.org. Next, I'd like to give you just a bit of background on our work with Wikidata. When we, we released our linked open data in 2017, we approached the people at Wikidata to ask if they could create two new Wikidata properties the Carnegie Hall agent ID and the Carnegie Hall work ID. The reasoning for this was that we knew our data contained records for many people, composers, performers, and many creative works that might either lack representation or be underrepresented in the structured data available on the web. And by having this new property available, it would facilitate the creation of new Wikidata items or the enhancement of existing items using our data as an authority source. To date, we have aligned more than 15,000 of our name IDs and more than 1,600 of our creative work IDs with Wikidata. Not only does this help cement the relationship between our data and the rest of the data available on the web, but it also improves their search engine optimization as Wikidata is uh, quite readily crawled by Google. Now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Catherine, who's going to tell you about the formation of our data lab. Thanks, Rob. Um, as you mentioned, I'm going to cover how everything that Rob described uh, had been turned into a recent initiative centered around the value and the enduring value of that work. Um, the question that kept getting asked was, how do we keep up the momentum and share dynamic and engaging ways for our colleagues and the general public to understand the value of, of linked open data work within the cultural heritage sector? Um, we took a look at what we were working with, and basically we had time and we had people power. 
Um, there was a six month gap in uh, NEH grant cycle to update and relaunch an existing interactive digital timeline that was built in 2009 on flash web technology. So it needed a little bit of an update and Carnegie Hall's chief digital officer oversaw the commitment to modernizing it. Um, this work is to make sure that the humanities content centered around Dr. Portia Maltzby's research on African-American music, culture, and history is made accessible again to a broader public audience. We also have, of course, my two colleagues on the phone. Um, so we have three archives employees with rudimentary developer skills, but a lot of interest and passion and background in archiving, preservation, information science, and data and metadata management. So we had a purpose, we picked a name, and starting in January, the Carnegie Hall Data Lab was born. Um, it was and continues to be a learning space for Carnegie Hall to expand our own understanding of information innovation. And this is achieved through experiments with linked open data, other semantic technologies, and data-driven strategies that leverage and focus on the resources from the archives itself. And I just want to take you a little bit through our data lab project site, which acts as a space for archives to experiment and share the results of our experiments. Um, we needed a site that was administered by the archives and did not require uh, a web team to initiate or update. We ended up going with GitHub pages, which allows users to build simple websites on top of existing GitHub repositories for basically a 1.0 version of our project site. Uh, we are looking forward to building up a more dynamic site in the future, but in the meantime, you can explore everything that we've shared through the homepage of the Carnegie Hall Data Lab site. Um, there are recent posts about our activities and what we've been working on. And in the nav bar, you can learn more about our mission, contact us in the archives, or click on the experiments to see uh, what kind of things we're cooking up in the lab. We also attempt to address Carnegie Hall's role as a prominent cultural heritage institution by examining ways that we can better educate our audiences, specifically by sharing a wider range of resources inspired by and based on linked open data. This helps provide more context about Carnegie Hall's past, present, and future. And to that end, since January, we've shared the project site internally to staff as a resource specifically to content producing departments. Our social media team recently has been adding links to relevant experiments as supplemental content for general social media posts, indicating to us in the archives that they believe their audiences do enjoy exploring what's possible with linked open data. And to jump into that and to have a little fun ourselves, I'm going to hand it over to Lisa. Thanks, Catherine. All right, so the experiments, this is the fun part. Um, so these are the visualizations with our current experience, experiments. So far, we have nine active experiments on our site, and we have one inactive, um, which is an interactive experiment that unfortunately does not quite mesh well with our GitHub site, but hopefully will be available in the near future. So we're working on a few collabor collaborative experiments, and we have some ideas lined up for future installments. So that said, we're more than open to any ideas that anyone may have for us. Um, all of our experiments follow a lab report style with an introduction and a basic summary, followed by a more in-depth report detailing the experiment method, findings, and thoughts for future investigation. So you can switch to the next slide. So our first experiment, whose birthday today? So this was our first ever experiment. Um, for this experiment, we generated a birthplace map of performers and composers from Carnegie Hall's performance history search. So to do so, we use Wikidata's query service to create a Sparkle query with the Carnegie Hall agent ID, Wikidata birth locations, and binds for today's date and month. So you can find more details about this query on our method section of the lab report. I won't get into it here. Um, but then we use the default Wikidata map template to display our results as a visualization. So within this map, you can kind of see in this picture here, but the user can click the red markers to see whose birthday is today. Um, and the featured photo here is from July 13th of Mickey Walker. Um, so this is our first experiment and definitely shows our learning curve. We originally created another version of the map, which linked results back to the HTML version on Carnegie Hall's performance history search. But this was a bit clunky, so we decided to go with this other version. 
Um, so despite our learning curve, the Wikidata map template was very easy to use and a great way to surface the Carnegie Hall agent ID and connections. Um, and because a lot of our entities don't have a Wikidata item, we're hoping to advance our discovery and presentation layer to be able to offer our own map and visualization tools and expose our unique data in the future. So moving on to our most recent experiment. So this is the Leszczytyski effect. So he was a pianist, composer, and teacher who was one of the most influential piano pedagogues of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. So Theodore Leszczytyski apparently worked with around 1,200 different pianists. Um, many of his students performed at Carnegie Hall and spanned the course of the 20th century in the hall's first 100 years. So a lot of pianists. Um, to surface an image grid of the students, we created a Sparkle query using Wikidata's query service and then used the default Wikidata image grid to generate the visualization, which you can see a little snippet of it here. So again, more in-depth information about the Sparkle query is available in the method section of the lab report, and it's not as complicated as it may look. Um, this experiment offers a future opportunity to improve the data presented in Wikidata to mo more fully express the relationships between musical students and teachers. Um, right. So thank you for listening. Um, you could check out carnegiehall.github.io slash data lab or get in touch with us one of these other ways listed. Um, and we have some more resources on the next slide, just other links that are applicable to our project. So thank you.